Hey everyone, hey everyone, welcome to another show. Today we're going to talk about game basics. And um, what is much important is that we're going to focus on the gaming, like a business overall, and we're going to focus on the game a business model so that you can understand a little better how you do business with other people in the game industry. For example, how you get about publisher, about the distributor, or how you go about the um, game developer. We're going to look at how those things have been before, how they are now, where, what is happening in the whole overall industry. And then we're going to dive in some numbers and see um, how, are, how is the revenue structured per segmentation in the game industry. And uh, I think that that's something very important, especially early on when you're designing your first game or something like that. It's to be all right on the target, right on the focus. Where is the sweet spot? right when you are going about bombarding you're not changing your target you keep focus on your target you're bombarding that's exactly with game making when you find and when you know what kind of game you want what is the business model who are your partners you just go towards that goal you don't change left and right so that's exactly what we're going to talk about this game and see you in a minute It's very straightforward. It used to be you, you had a, a group of people do a, a game development called developer. They come out with idea, they sit down, they, they build a game. Then you had a publisher. They, the, the game developer goes to the publisher uh, and uh, persuade them that this game is gonna be the next big hit. The publisher takes the game, do the marketing, PR, and they uh, approach distribution, right? Go to the distributor, and they find many ways to distribute their game so everybody can play the game, right? That was the traditional way of doing business. That's how it was before, right? And this model still exists in some cases. For example, in the mobile side, you have a uh, developer studio, they find a publisher, the publisher uh, takes the game and then they go and distribute it uh, uh, with some other distributors, right? With some uh, ad companies or through Facebook or through Google Mobad and uh, Apple search ads, things like that. But let's see what is also happening. Now, what started to happen not so long ago is uh, for some more advanced games, uh, you would get uh, two developers to come together to create a bigger game and then they together go and find a publisher for example a studio in in, in Europe and studio in US would co um, collaborate together to make a game and then they together can go and find a publisher also what happened in the from the publisher side when uh, they have a very famous game studio designing a game um, th there might be publisher from Europe publisher from states they come together, two publishers, find one game maker, and they publish game simultaneously into geographics. This started to happen also. Now, uh, one big game developer publish game in US with one publisher, in Europe with another, in Asia with third, and so forth, right? And keeps on publishing the game in different regions. This is very common. And again, uh, these different publishers go and find different uh, distributors. Also what happened uh, is uh, now, of course, this requires more work, this requires more um, uh, connections in the industry, is you have uh, two developers and two publishers or more developers, more publishers, everybody come together and say, okay, we know the mobile is going to be a next big hit. We are 100% con convinced the next big hit is coming on the mobile, we just don't know yet where it's going to come. Well somebody knows somebody has idea and he gets group of two or three or four developers and they reach out to two or three publishers and they say look guys we have this idea we have experience we know we have already been around the block now we have uh, this this two three publishers say okay we all come together let's make this game so you have a publisher and developers and partners before you even wrote the first line of code of course this requires years and years of uh, industry experience and connectivity so you know the people you know who to talk to and how to communicate and again they will go to the distributor and distributor going forward also very uh, uh, 
famous model that, that is happening now, especially when the, the, the mobile, we're talking about mobile gaming, is that you have a one company that has a development team, they have a publishing team, and they have their own distribution channel. Now you have a company that has all three sectors, right? They have game design, game publishing, and they have a distribution. This is the most profitable model. It's, it's very rare to see that the one, um, maybe, um, one example would be uh, Sony PlayStation, right? Or the um, um, Microsoft, right? Uh, X -X -X Xbox, right? That's another, and um, maybe a few more. But um, it's very rare, and I think this is going to happen soon. You're going to see soon this happening more and more. Now let, let's move to another one. You have also a big publisher that has a small development team that outsource some work to uh, to um, third party to, to outsource some work of development. They keep all the publishing themselves and they also have uh, some distribution channel. This is also happening. We see this many times. This is the most used model uh, that we have. And um, what is very important is now nowadays the rules are gone. There are no more rules. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There are no more rules in terms of um, uh, there is a one publisher, one um, developer, one uh, distributor. Now there's going to be a many, 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 many of them. The, 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 the things are just increasing, multiplying. And um, if you are long enough in this industry and you know people in this industry, it's going to be much easier for you to collaborate with other people, when, uh, especially when you have trust among people and when somebody knows you and you have a big idea, you found that you found that, uh, like I said before, sweet spot. You know where is it. And now all you need is to get the people you worked with before. Of course, how you worked with them and how you treated them is going to matter a lot. And uh, now you can get them all together, put them on the same page, say, listen, folks, this is what we are going to do and this is why it's going to succeed. And you can prove all the metrics and uh, you're going to have not so hard time getting uh, partners on board. <clears throat> Uh, of course, you, you might have another model, something else that I didn't see here, but I think this is the most common uh, uh, models that are happening recently and it's important for you to know that all these options exist. You might not choose either one of them, you might stick to the very traditional one and you try some experimental, but um, you need to be aware these things happen because the market is overcrowded, the competition is very hard in the game uh, making space and I believe you should uh, uh, at least think about some of these uh, opportunities or options that are uh, now presented to all the game makers. Uh, when we get back uh, on this episode of Game Basics, we're going to talk about um, revenue and business models in games. Let's see what are the revenue streams worldwide and how does that look? Uh, blue would be game software, uh, orange is subscription, uh, gray is uh, vir virtual goods and uh, yellow is um, in-game ads. You see that the cost for buying a game it remain the same, especially when you're talking about the mobile side, you see that mostly games go for uh, a buck, two, five bucks, some games might go for ten, uh, I, I, I doubt that they have many purchases, uh, but they do. Overall, this is like overall, it's two bucks. There are games that cost more than one ninety nine are rarely getting uh, some massive downloads. Um, I don't know why, simply the industry is not, uh, the users are not, with so many free games to play, the users are simply not choosing to pay for that. And I think this is going to keep happening even more and more. Uh, the, the, this thing will start happening on consoles, and will start happening on PC as well. I mean, it's already begun, but it's going to even increase. The thing also that's shrinking, like you can see here, is online subscriptions. So you had the growth of this uh, business model before where people would pay for online subscriptions. And what does that mean is that now people would be paying monthly for something, 
right? Whether they are getting some extra bonus or they are getting increasing speed to get some gold or something like that. Yeah, that came, that looked like it's gonna be popular, but I think overall it's decreasing, like you can see here from the numbers, that the, the, the numbers are going down. That means in 2011 from five buck, and now to 2017, 18, it's three bucks. So it's, it's definitely down, like you can see, and it's not, doesn't look to me it's going to grow back again. Um, now, interesting part, and that's in-game virtual goods. In 2011, it was four buck, and now if you take a look in 2018, it's uh, predicted to be 21. And that's a huge growth, that's 5x growth. And um, that's something you should definitely be aware of is that um, this is the sector that grow fastest. I think the first game that, that broke something like this was really, really World of Warcraft on PC. They really broke the, the, the they, they opened a whole new business model. Um, they had, a, um, you had to pay to play, so you had, a, uh, you had to pay money to own the game. You had to pay subscription to pay the game. And then you had in-game virtual goods. And um, the only thing they didn't have from the list is serving ads, which I doubt they might introduce to sometime like this or next year, uh, because the revenue is falling down in the world of Warcraft. But um, in-game virtual goods really exploded in the last decade. And then they're gonna keep growing and growing and growing even more. So if you're designing a game, you should definitely consider having something that people can purchase. Free to download, no subscriptions, in-game purchases, and like you can see, ads are growing as well. So the revenue from ads is growing, growing, growing. That means everybody wants more exposure and everybody wants more um, opportunity for people to get to know their game. And that's also one of the today obvious ways to go for revenue. Now, what I would like also to focus here by watching this is give you ability to, uh, no, what actually I want to do is give you a very simple question. When you know all the things we talked about on this show, about games, and when you see these charts, you should be very clear that you do not want to participate in the two and three buck uh, um, industry. You don't want to participate in that part of the industry. You want to participate here where you have 21 and five, which is 26. Now, what does that mean? If you are pitching, for your game, for idea for your game. If you're pitching for something, you can clearly show this chart and say, we wanna be here, everybody understand you. When you're pitching today and you're saying, we're paid to play game, immediately in my mind, that means your game is two bucks, you have to spend a dollar to acquire a user, which leaves dollar behind. So if I um, am a publisher and I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, oh my God, I have to put uh, 50K, 60K, 100K just to run a few ads uh, to see if there are potential returns, how much it's gonna cost me to acquire a customer, maybe $1.10, $1.20, because the prices are rising, right? And then it leaves 80, 80 cents per, per uh, download. Now from 80 cents per download, um, we have a revenue share where we are sharing, uh, let's say 50, 50, right? So how much money I have to spend un until my user acquisition cost rises? What does that mean? How much I need to spend until I find a sweet spot for this game and the game starts uh, picking up users. And then when I uh, exhaust all the uh, pipelines, all, all the, uh, when I exhaust all the, the distribution channels, when I exhaust them all, how am I going to find a new sources for downloads and how we are going to make money from this? So it, it's very, very rough. Um, subscription, subscription based games also are in a dire strait. Why? Because the, the prices is going lower, the players are less. Um, what is very good is that you have optional subscription in the game. So for example, you, you, you get a game that is a massive, you get a few million players, 
uh, uh, playing your game and then you can offer in-game subscription for something special now your game is still free to play but you offer something in game for subscription that's that's advanced combo stuff that you can do it so you have uh, per in-game purchases you have in-game subscription for some premium model you have um, also ability to opt, opt out from the ads in the game things like that so subscription opts you out from the ads people pay three bucks a month they don't want to see any ad in your game uh, and they can pay for three months they don't want to pay like anymore they, they don't pay anymore things like that so I'm, I'm just giving you this raw data so you can come out with ideas uh, what would work great for your game um, if you have any questions or you have any suggestions or you disagree with anything I said and you you think um, there is another way that I didn't saw or something that I pursue please leave in the comments or reach out and uh, we'll, we'll try to find the right answer or fix what we have made mistake here uh, take care guys and uh, enjoy the show see you in the next one